What's up, everybody? This is Bob Hollywood with Bob's Holly World. Today I'm bringing you the second episode of Civvies, Soldiers, Spacemen, and Superheroes. Um, last week's episode, I think, was... Or the last episode I did, rather, I think it was 17 figures. Today there's 10 more. Today there's 27 figures. Uh, you, as you can see, there are... 23 in front of you. Um, the top three, of course, are off screen, and there is again a duplicate this week, and I will discuss that when we get there. Um, so let's begin. The first figure we have, and we're gonna, I was gonna say, we're gonna see how long it takes before they fall because last week they fell relatively early. Oh, double domino. This week they fell super quick. Um, this first figure we have here is just a random knight. It is from the Slick brand, Slicked, I can't pronounce it. And these are just stationary toys you can find at Target or formerly Toys R Us. I thought this night was pretty cool, so I bought them. It was in the dollar bin at a comic stop, so I bought them along with everything else the same week. And again, this is also like last week, this is relatively... I bought this like a few weeks ago. I'm just now catching up on stuff I need to do. Our second figure is King Loki. From the Thor line, I think Thor the Dark World. I don't remember exactly. I really like this figure. Only thing I don't like about it is that he won't stand up, and that's why he's ranked so lowly. I was just so annoyed by the fact that he would not stand. But other than that, he's a great figure. He's awesome. He's Loki. He looks just like Tom Hiddleston. The sculpt is great. The paint is great. Everything is good on this guy. Just, he has trouble standing up. It's his leg thing. It's kind of the same way it was with Spider-Man Noir last time. At number three, I have both of these Green Lantern figures. Um, one is Barris and the other is Sade. I don't know which one is which. Honestly, I just got them out of the packaging. As you can see, they're Green Lanterns that they came with. They're back there. Three points of articulation. They don't have legs, but that's cool. They just float. They stand on their own, which is awesome, but there's nothing to do with them. You know, they're just, they came with another figure. Number four, or number five, how you want to look at it, are these two. These are from Ready Player One, and I saw this box set, and I, I hunted this box set down for the longest time. I was not paying full price. Um, their articulation is pretty cool. They have the same articulation, that's why they're ranked together. There's no difference, I'm not, one's not better than the other. It's just you got a blue guy and a pink girl, and and this guy's name is Parzival, or Parvizal, and this is Artemis with a three in there. So they're cool, I didn't see the movie, and I think that's perfectly okay, I never read the book. I just think they're cool toys, I wanted them because they're three and three quarter inches. And these are probably the only civvies I have in this whole thing so yeah they're cool they're the first civvies in the civvies series so. up next we have this spider-man who is almost in like a little static pose I mean he's not the worst articulated figure here we've seen the worst articulated figure which is that knight whose accessory was anything that moved on but this guy he's got these legs that keep him in the stance He's got a lot of articulation. He's relatively small. I want to say he is. He's three and three quarters. So he's normal height. He's just for a Marvel figure. He's small. Um, nothing really good to say. Nothing really bad to say about him. Rather, his mask is sculpted instead of painted, and it feels great. It's a lot of sculpt on this. Um, he's just ranked so lowly because you know he's stuck in this position for the most part with his legs. I don't like that. Up next is Sinestro from the Green Lantern film from like 2011. He came with either Barris or Sade. And the reason why he's ranked so lowly compared to the Hal Jordan back there is because he has weird feet. His feet gotten molded a certain way and they're stuck that way so he doesn't stand very easily on his own. He's doing it right now to embarrass me. But like you can't see his feet right now because I don't want to move the camera. But he's like stuck in a position, an annoying, his feet, his toes are stuck in an annoying position. But other than that, he's cool, he's got decent articulation, no knees or elbows, but he looks like the actor, I can't think of the actor's name, I don't think I know the actor's name, but, but he's pretty cool, he's rad, I like him, he's just, I don't like, 
I don't like that he won't stand up, and right now he won't focus, so... You have to take my word for it that he looks like... There we go. He looks like the dude. He's pink, you know, with green eyes. He's cool. Up next, we have a Thaner Thanagarian. This is a Hawkeye alien sort of... Hawkeye. Hawkman alien sort of thing. Uh, pretty good articulation. He's the one I have two of. Uh, he came in the three-pack with this other one. And with Hawk Hawkman, I keep wanting to say Hawkeye. Wrong Hawk, wrong publisher. But, yeah, they're pretty cool. Good articulation. They're like a step above that green lantern I just showed you because they have elbows and knees. Um, they came with wing accessories, so I'll go over that. All of the figures you see in front of you today, I still have their accessories. It's just easier to store without. So I store their accessories separately. I took their little wings off because they were detachable. Um, other than that, they're pretty cool. They're bros, man. They're just bros. I would like to get more of these. I wouldn't need another Hawkman, but more of these would be lovely. Next, we have the Spider-Man. This is another Spider-Man. This is my third overall Spider-Man. Um, and I'm not a big fan of Spider-Man. I'll be the first person to tell you that. But I probably have more Spider-Man action figures than any other toy. Whether that's 5-inch um, or 6-inch or 3 and 3 quarter. I had to think about the 6-inch. I do believe I have more. I, th I have like two Spider-Man. And... That's the only thing I have in 6-inch that's a duplicate. So they're not the same toy, but they're both Spider-Man. And this guy is red and blue. Um, very cartoonish looking, but he's cool. There's no webbing on his mask, but he's, he's cool looking. He's not ranked low, I wouldn't say, but he's not he's not in the top half, so, but he's cool. Next up is the third figure we have from the Ready Player One line. His name is Irock. I know nothing about this series. I thought he looked cool in the packaging. He's one of the reasons why I wanted to get the four pack. He has great articulation. You can't notice all of their articulation in the box, but um, I got the box for dirt cheap, like dirt cheap. So much in fact that I bought multiple one of them. Multiple of them, and I think I'm gonna customize this guy. He's got this skull in the middle, as you can see through. I don't know what the deal with that is. I don't know what the deal with any of the Ready Player One figures or or characters. I'll be honest. But he's cool. He's he's cool. He's I want to say short. I'm so used to saying short, but he's just he's four inches. But compared to a Marvel figure, which we don't have very many of this week, that's relatively short. Next we have Condor from Lanterns, the Core, and next to Marvel Infinite, Marvel uh, Universe, they also call the three and three quarters Marvel Legends which they don't seem to be making a lot of, or any of, it seems like. The core stuff is my favorite. Um, I prefer the villains. Condor is a member of the core and not the curse. But, you know, see, he's like a pilot or a paratrooper. And I bought him in a three-pack with two of the other figures back there. I can't tell you which because they don't really know. But, yeah, three-pack of him. He's pretty cool. This is, this is just a cool little dude. Next we have Hal Jordan. Green Lantern, bam! And again, he came with a lantern. So did uh, so did Sinestro. They both came with Green Lanterns because of the Green Lanterns. Um, this guy's pretty good. I didn't see the Green Lantern movie. I'll be the first person to tell you that. It's, I didn't see it. I think I started watching like the beginning, but it just didn't interest me. Uh, it just didn't. I can't be. I can't lie. I can't make up another excuse. It just didn't interest me. But this guy's cool. He looks like Ryan Reynolds with the Green Lantern mask on. And I think that's neat. The toys probably are the best thing about that movie from what, from what I've read about reviews, but I can't judge it. Next up, we have H. And her name is actually on her chest. And I only found out that this is a girl, like, avatar for, for in the game or whatever from watching another video. And that's probably how I figured out how to pronounce the name. But this dude is cool. He's probably the he is the main reason why I wanted that four pack of the Ready Player One figures. He came with a little shotgun looking thing. He's got like he's skeletal on the back. I mean, if you were to just look at the box and you didn't know anything, you would think this is Eye Rock because he's got one eye and he's got like a super eye patch thing or she. But yeah, this is this is pretty neat. This is pretty neat. I'm gonna do some customizations of these, like just paint them different colors so they stand out. But that's better than just having a bunch of the same figure walking around. 
Next up, we have Recoil. Bam! He came with two little pistols. Uh, and this is another. This is another core figure. This one's static, other than his arms and his and his head. So three points of articulation, and that's not the worst of the night. But he's cool. Yeah, and there's another three points of articulation core figure back there uh, by the name of Reaper. But I rank Reaper higher because I like Reaper's details, and we're going to get into that shortly. So there we go. There is Recoil. I dropped him. There's Recoil. Next, another core figure. The third of the day, we have Rucker. Rucker has more articulation. He doesn't have as much. You know, he has the same amount of articulation as Condor. So his legs go up, and his knees bend, and his arms do this. He can give you a big hug. Um, see it turns. He kind of reminds me of somebody off of um, <sighs> Trey Parker and Matt Song, um, Team America. Like his head's big, his feet are big. I stood him up to like a, a not a GI Joe. Oh yeah, GI Joe, the same size, and he just looks cartoonish and comical, but he's cool. I like the core. I like what they're doing. They're cheap. If you got kids, ladies and gentlemen, and they want little soldiers, and you can't afford GI Joe like I can't, a core is where it's at. Kid won't be disappointed. Okay, this is the almost the last core figure, but um, this is Reaper, and just look at his face paint. He's wearing a mask with face paint. He's got the little curse skull on his chest, and he just looks badass. Like he's three points of articulation. No, he's two points of articulation. He's one less than um recoil, but that mask, that mask means so much to me. Little gloves. He came with like a automatic weapon, and he's just awesome. He's he's a curse. He's a villain. If you notice, all the villains have been ranked higher than the the heroes, but that's just how I roll. I'm that kind of guy. Up next, we have the final Spider-Man of the evening, and this is from Spider-Man: Homecoming. I just saw this two-pack with the Vulture that's back there in the store, and they were dirt cheap. So I was like, let me get them. The articulation is cool. Again, I'm not a fan of Spider-Man, but this this toy, as well as the actual uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man, are badass. Like, I like that they got a kid to play a kid, and I like that he's he's wisecracking but respectful. He won't shut up when he's fighting, but like he's got a heart of a hero. And, I don't know, those are the same qualities that Spider-Man's always had, but I just, the superhero doesn't appeal to me. But I like the suit, I like the actor, I like the character right now. So, yeah, this is, this is my life, this little dude right here. Next up is Mace Windu from Star Wars. He came with his little lightsaber, and this dude's cool, he, he does that, he can swing his lightsaber, he can swing his lightsaber. He um, came with some like electricity um, accessory, as if Emperor Palpatine grabbed him up, or I guess Darth Sidious, whichever one you want to call him. I call him Emperor Palpatine all the time. I'm actually gonna, if I ever have a son, which I doubt, I'm gonna name him Sheev because it's just a badass name. But there's Mace. Let me try to get, it. let me try to clear up. There he goes. He looks like Samuel Jackson. Looks like an angry, tired of these mother snakes on this motherfucking plane kind of dude. But it's Mace Windu which was a few years before that, but yeah, he's cool. He didn't have any faith in Anakin, and Anakin actually restored faith, the, the Force, so there you go. And his legs move too, but he has this this skirt, this robe rather, it's not a skirt, and um, so it limits his mobility, but you don't want to do anything with him. He just does that, and he squeezes his legs, and he's cool. He looks like he looks like um, Samuel Jackson. Up next is the final member of the core series. And this is Shrapnel. This is a bad dude. I like Shrapnel because he can, in theory, kick his legs to the side. But he's got this holster on his thigh, which makes it practically impossible. But, you know, he can do this. His waist, he can dance if you need him to dance. Just like with Reaper, he has this awesome face paint on his skull, on his um mask. And I think that's awesome. I think, dude, maybe black because, you know, his arms are dark dark as hell and um it looks like his sleeves are rolled up so i think he's a black dude yeah he has a tattoo so this is, this is a black dude so the black dudes are winning in terms of like in the top 10 like he's black last guy was black the next guy's black so black figures yay 
Up next, we have Lando Calrissian. And Lando suffers from a lot of the stuff that King Loki from earlier suffers from, but I just like this figure so much. I didn't want to rank him lowly. And um, I'm not I'm not ashamed of it. He came with his robe. What are all of these new, I believe? So he came with his robe. He's official three and three quarter inch. I think that's something Star Wars does well. Or Hasbro does well with Star Wars. I don't know why they want their their Marvel characters to be so damn big, but I don't know, I guess to make them larger than life. But he looks like Billy D. Williams. Like when I was writing down everybody's name so I wouldn't mess up the order or when I wouldn't so I wouldn't uh, forget somebody's name. I could not think of Lando. I could only think of Billy D. Williams. But yeah, this is Lando Calrissian. He's awesome. When before I bought this, the week before I saw the Donald Glover version, or yeah, I think it was Donald Glover version, or maybe I saw, I saw the fan, but it wasn't there when I bought these, which I was disappointed. But bang bang, he's cool. Up next is Hawkman, and this dude is pretty legit. He's 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 badass. He's got these wings. They don't come off. I wish they did, but they don't. Um, this mask with a lot of great sculpting. Paint on this guy is good. No paint rubbed off. I know I talked about that a little bit on the last episode about some of the DC figures. As always, he's relatively short compared to a Marvel figure, but he's four inches. And that's not even taking into account the wingtips on his head. He's a little bit over four inches if you count those. But this dude's bad. This dude looks awesome. Um, nice little tan on him. Um, Hawkman's not my favorite uh, DC character. I don't dislike Hawkman, but, you know, he's just Hawkman to me. Uh, I, I was a little disappointed when he died on the first season of Legend of Tomorrow, but that, that, that show was pretty good. But he, I didn't miss him after that. I just was like, wow, they got rid of a member of the crew. Next up, outside of the top three, the last one outside of the top three is Vulture. This one came with that last Spider-Man. Um, this dude's badass. He came with his gigantic wings. Uh, lots of articulation, lots of detail, really good paint. Um, I didn't see Spider-Man Homecoming, but I don't necessarily like the, the feet. He stands up, no problem. I just think they look weird, but I can't really say anything because maybe that's, maybe that's just uh, how the suit, well, it's obviously how the suit was designed or else it wouldn't be there. But, yeah, this is, this is Vulture, he's cool. And for the first figure in our top three, we have Titan from the Core Elite. He's a cursed member, though. Um, I just like this dude. He, like like uh, like Rucker, he has a comically large head, but he's cool. He's a he's a cool dude. I just like him. Um, he can move a lot. He can move really well. His legs can do a lot. He's not going to be stuck. He, he's going to have to stand weird right now. But other than that, he's pretty cool. I like him. I really do. He's got a big head. Dude has to have a big head. Like a big milk dud head. Like if you headbutt somebody, he doesn't even need to shoot him. He can just headbutt him. Number two, and this is, thank you, this is a redemption for King Loki, is just Loki. And it's not like King Loki has a crown and regular Loki doesn't. But that's the dude's name, King Loki. This is Loki. This one stands no problem. Okay, now he wants to embarrass me. He stands no problem. Looks like Tom Hiddleston, who is, in my opinion, probably the best part of the MCU. And um, the films I've seen him in, which are... I didn't see the second Thor, but every other film I've seen him in is awesome. A little sad that he died at the um, beginning of Infinity War, but hopefully he'll come back. He's an Asgardian. And so there's hope. Nothing really to say about this dude other than I like him, just because I like Loki. And this one stands up. Like the top three would have probably been both Lokis, but the the previous one did not want to stand up properly. And last but not least is kind of like a retread on last episode. It is Daredevil. And this one is in red and black armor. Um, not as much articulation as the last episode's Daredevil, which was in the classic red suit, but he's still badass. He's still badass. He just doesn't have like unnecessarily swivel, unnecessary swivels. But this black suit, this red and black suit is awesome. It really and well truly is. He looks like the devil. That folks, um 
I got a phone call, but yeah, this Daredevil is awesome. He really is. He's the best figure of the week, just like the last time, video one. Um, nothing bad to say about this guy. Like his lack of as much articulation as the previous Daredevil is not a bad thing. It is what it is. He's his own individual piece. He's he's cool. He's a little cool guy, man. I had him posed before I started the video again, but I think it was this leg. Yeah, that's just cool. He came with a weapon, just like the previous Daredevil, just like most of these figures. And that's it. So um, I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, Bob Hollywood, for another episode of Civvy, Soldiers, Spacemen, and Superheroes. And, of course, this is Bob's Holly World. So I appreciate you guys for watching the video. Like and subscribe. Share it with your friends. Share it with people that like toys. Just, just share it in general, man. You can share it with your worst, your worst enemy if you think it will bring them pain. Just share it so it can get some views and maybe then get some likes and then some shares and some more subscriptions and stuff like that. So that's it, guys. See you next time.